We're going to talk now about the uh, 40 developmental assets. Has anybody in the room heard of the developmental assets before? Has anybody participated in any training around the developmental assets before? Okay. The developmental assets were developed by the Search Institute. And essentially what they are is that they are 40 pieces assets that if they're in present that if they are present in the lives of youth then youth will have a foundation to move forward into the future they're what they need to to support them the more assets youth have the more likely they are to avoid at-risk behavior that's important right that's what we're trying to do now right we've got the outcomes we've got the developmental needs now how do we make sure that they're starting to come away from that at-risk behavior to have their needs met and, and the outcomes that we want. We want to have them uh, better succeed by looking at the developmental assets. Uh, there's two things that you were just given uh, from Marion. The first is the actual list of the 40 developmental assets. And you know it's interesting even as adults to go through these and check off, make a list, whether you have them in place now or whether you have them in place as a young person. The other is the asset checklist. The asset checklist is a great tool to use when you're working with youth because it in itself is an actual check box that puts it into real layman's, easy to understand terms that you can just um, have them decide whether that asset is uh, in place in their life or not. Uh, on average, youth admit to only having 19. That's the average, 19 of the 40, okay? As a community and with our organizations and the things that we do, we have the opportunity to create more assets for youth, right? If we start to work together, we can reinforce some of those assets. That means that everyone from the teacher to the coach to the parent to the neighbor on the street, right? It takes the whole village is the expression. Everybody's heard it, right? That's the 40 developmental assets. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do an activity that kind of displays how this works to bring it into uh, a real live uh, visual for people who um, want to better understand what I'm talking about. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the big space over here and I need to have uh, 10 volunteers form a circle. Okay. Okay, so Rebecca is going to start. And what you're going to do is you are going to talk about a role that you have as an asset builder. Somebody who, when you were a young person, helped you build your assets. Okay? Right? So who is one person that helped you uh, build your assets? A soccer coach. Soccer coach. Okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to choose somebody who's at least two people away from you. You hold on to the end and you pass them the, the string. Yes. So pass it off to somebody. Jennifer. Jennifer, who helped you build uh, assets? Coach is taken. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> my grandmother. Grandmother. Okay. Somebody at least two people away from you? Lawrence. Lawrence. Who helped you build assets? My teacher. Teacher. Okay. Carmen. Carmen. Who helped you build assets? Aunt and uncle? No, aunt and uncle. You took two from all your friends. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> You're making them think a little bit harder, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let's just keep that untied. There you go. Okay, pass off to somebody else. So we've got coach, we've got grandmother, we've got teacher, we've got aunt and uncle. Friends. Friends. Okay, pass the end off. Well, you're going to have to make this work, right? No brother. You had a brother, Benoit? Okay. Pass the end to somebody. And don't let go. That's right. My mom. Your mom. Perfect. Pass off to somebody. ESL. ESL. ESL is English as a second language, just in case you don't know the acronym. <laughs> oh, she's okay. I'm 
Okay. Oh, there's only one left. Oh, there's one left. That's okay. You pass off to her. Oh, who else is left? Are you not playing yet? Okay. Okay. Who did you say? Sister. Okay. And one more. Cousin. So we've got cousin. We've got grandmother. Friends. Friends. ESL. Brother. Teacher. What did you say? Brother. Okay. Yeah, you did say brother. Sister. Mom. Aunt and uncle. Coach. Okay. So we've got a group of people who are asset builders. Okay. Then what we've got are um, your community has 10 young people in it. That's my balloons are 10 young people. This young people person believes that 31 of 40 of their assets are being met. So you're going to try and keep that, keep them in the air because it's your job to embrace them and keep the, at, without using your hands, only the strings. Let's make it Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can rest on the strings? You can rest, then it's supported. Okay. But then along come. But then along come the other three who have 21 to 30 met. Close it up. Close it up. Close it up. And then along come the other three who have 11 to 20 oh. assets being met without using your arms, just your string. Oh, <laughs> and then you have your 0 to 10s. Without using your bodies. Without using your bodies. Now, anybody who was born in January, March, April, July, September, November just moved out of town. Walk away. How you doing holding up all those asset kids? It's really challenging. Is there anything you can do to make it different? Is there anything you can do as a group? Is there anything you can do? What do you need? From? Management. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Management is one asset builder. What else do we need? What, what else do we need the assistance from? Youth. Do we need some youth to come? So two youth move into town to help the other people see if they can pull these assets back out. Oh, even their big one wasn't coming. allowed to pick them up? She's picking up the little one now. Well, I'll get them. Don't worry. Can we revive them all? You can save. You can save. Okay. Okay. We need more residents. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can you can drop it down and set it right there. You can set it right there. <laughs> Good. Okay. What would have made it uh, easier to keep everything up for the whole time? More people. Net. More people. A net. A safety net. Right. <laughs> More people, more asset builders, right? Yeah. More people to assist with it. Because when you had your full group, you were doing okay, yeah. right? Go ahead. I was ahead. gonna say, allow the youth workers to do what they need to do by using their hands or their bodies to help. Stop limiting, stop hand tying us, management. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right? But no, I mean, it's a great analogy, right? I said strings only, don't use your bodies. Benoit was trying to go in there and use like his, <laughs> you know, he was trying to do this and they were trying to use their body. And I said, no, strings only, strings only. So sometimes there are other forces. <laughs> Jack, I think it's Jack the system, um, right? But I think that's, I mean, it's a great analogy that sometimes restrictions are put on us as asset builders that we can't continue to build those assets because, you know, and that's when we have to turn and say, uh, we need support. What is that support? We have to define what that support is. Is it more open policies? Is it more people? Is it more people to move back to town? I heard somebody say that. They all moved out at the same time. Everybody has to come back to town. Okay. What does this show about the power of community? Working together. Closer together, less gaps. Closer together, less gaps. And we know that it can be a barrier in some communities to try and break down so that you're out of your silos and into your fields. Right, so to speak. Sorry, rural analogy, I guess. But right, so you're you're no longer in those compartmentalized departments. You're working together to do what needs to be done. Okay. Um, what will you remember from this exercise tomorrow? 
everything. Key message. <laughs> What's the key message? Everybody has to work together, right? It takes a village, right? And the assets are 40 developmental assets. And some of them we can't meet within our sphere of responsibility, right? It's not our responsibility. But if it's not Jennifer's responsibility, it might be Manny's responsibility. So Manny and Jennifer have to work together to make sure that all of our kids are the big red 31 to 40. That's what we want. Because most of them feel like they're somewhere between 21 and Nine, or 20. They're, they're stuck in there, they're like the third size. Okay? Great. Good. 40 developmental assets. You know, we talked about the community and how it takes everybody to support it. If you go to the asset checklist, you'll see that they're written in emotion and feeling and uh, situation from the youth perspective because that's really what they are. So a couple of examples would be my school has clear rules and consequences for behavior. Okay, that's a developmental asset that meets the developmental needs of youth that helps us to create our outcome. But it's also very much specific that the young person can clearly answer, right? Things like, I feel good about myself. I believe my life has purpose. I'm optimistic about my future. It's really about how they feel and how they relate as part of that bigger world. Right? And it's our job to help build those assets. The assets are more easily met if you include the developmental needs in your planning and you aim for the outcome. Right? If you pull an asset, I'm actively engaged in learning. That's an asset. What developmental need does that mean? I'm actively engaged in learning. Mastery and achievement, right? Probably positive interactions with peers and, and adults, right? Because there's probably some teacher, usually a teacher teaches something, right? And the outcomes that you're building are confidence and competence. It all links back to each other, very clearly and very simply. 